Hi, I'm Mary Banks, and this is Bishop Jerome Jones, and we want to welcome you to another episode of Global Praise. Amen. We are coming to you from our Spring, Texas location out here, to glory to God, and, and we're still on the subject of the Grace Revolution versus the Grace Revelation. There's a revolution, a message that they call the Grace Revolution that is trending through the body of Christ. And we want, to, we want to see if this is actually what God is saying or is there a revelation of grace that is not being, amen, broadcasted on these major platforms. Glory to God. But God has a way. God, God is going to bring the truth to the forefront. The scripture is in Ezekiel 20, 36, verse 27. It says, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. In the last uh, episode, we was talking about the, the, the phrase, it will cause you. Uh -huh. That the spirit of grace is mm -hmm. what causes us to be uh, able to walk mm -hmm. in the very uh, statutes and, and to live our lives according to that that God has ordained for us to be. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, you know, this message, uh, again, we go back to the core of the message of grace is just a blanket. Grace has never been a blanket for My anything. God. It has God. never been a, that at all. And so one of the things that I, I did something in the, in, the, in the interim was to look at what Jesus warned the church of. Mm -hmm. Jesus warned the body of Christ, his disciples, when he said to them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Okay. And he, what he was doing is warning them of that doctrine that the Pharisees and Sadducees would be teaching. And that's what we must do today My because God. there is a real uh, epidemic of, of false teachings uh, that has grabbed the vast majority of the body of Christ and that, that has blinded them to the truth. So grace is, is not a, it's not the revolution by no means. It is indeed a revealing, Amen. revealing God's truth to the heart mm -hmm. and enabling us to walk <clears throat> in the power of that truth. Amen. So that's the grace of God. And so I, I, I believe that you have uh, uh, another point as is when we talk about enabling us to do it. Well, the New Testament is filled with the Word, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, mm -hmm. and how the Word lets us know that we now uh, are in a different dispensation, mm -hmm. with a different uh, age, and grace moves us to the complete standard mm -hmm. of what God always intended for us to do. My God. He intended for us to do this in the Old Testament. He didn't just now make this up because when he put Adam in the garden, he intended for Adam to live in the garden mm -hmm. without sin. Mm -hmm. When he created the angelic beings, he intended for them to roam all over the, the heavens, but he intended for them to do that without sin. Mm -hmm. God has always intended and purposed for all of his creatures that he's created to live a sinless life. Amen. But grace empowered us to be able to do that. Amen. So that we can do that without the struggle of being in captivity. You know, if we look back at that verse, that, that, that verse, uh, Ezekiel 36 and uh, 27, you, I don't know how we just do not allow the scriptures to say what they say. That's right. You know, the scripture says, I will put my spirit within you. Mm -hmm and cause you to walk in my statutes. That's right. The spirit that God puts in us is what's going to cause us to walk That's right. in his statutes. And he says, well, look what he says. And ye shall do what? You keep my judgments. That's right. And do them. That's right. You shall keep my judgments and do them. That, you know, the scripture says that it is not the hearers mm -hmm. of the word mm -hmm. that are blessed, but it's the doers. Mm -hmm. It's the doers. If God has given us statutes to live by, commandments to live by, and he took the, he took the, the Ten Commandments and he 
encapsulated them, encapsulated them into two. Mm -hmm. Amen. Loving God and loving your fellow man. That's Lord right. God, if you can do those, that's the embodiment of the law. Mm -hmm. If you can keep those commandments mm -hmm. and do, amen, if you can do them. This script, right. this script is saying we have to do that's right. the statutes of God. That's right. We have to do them. It's, it's, and and what, what the grace revolution does is takes away the responsibility mm -hmm. to do the statutes of God that's away right. from the believer. That's right. that's In other right. words, um, the, the, the law is villainized in that, in that, in that, mm -hmm. in, in that um, uh, uh, doctrine, you, you know, the law, but God didn't, didn't do away with the law. He sure did. No, he wrote it in our heart. That's right. That's what we read. That's right. and, glory to God. Amen. He, he wrote the law in our hearts. That's right. And in our mind. That's right. That's, that, that's what he did with the, with the law. Now, if we go to Romans 8, Bishop, mm -hmm. we go to Romans 8 and 3. Now, the, the, and this is this tells us why he wrote it. Romans eight and three says, "For what the law could not do, uh huh, in that it was weak mm -hmm. through the flesh, God sending His Son in the likeness of sin for flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled." <laughs> Hallelujah. In us mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now there's a whole, there's a, there's a whole Bible in this verse That's right. right here. This, this is the, this is the embodiment. This, mm -hmm. uh, to me, this verse embodies the whole New Testament. Mm -hmm. Amen. He says what the law, you know, we, the, 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 the grace revolution makes a big deal about we're not being under the law. That's right. You're not under the law. You're not under the law. We're not under the law. We can't do this. We don't have to do this. Glory to God. Now watch this. What the law could not do. Amen. Because of the flesh. God sent Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now notice what the scripture is saying. Because the law could not do, could not bring us to righteousness, mm -hmm. okay, because it was on stone. That's right. It was written on tables of stone. That's right. But you just taught us that God took it off the stone and put it in our heart. Mm -hmm. Changed us from the inside. Mm -hmm. Amen. Put the law inside of our hearts. Amen. That was the reason for the coming of Jesus Christ. Now notice what it said. He came for sin mm -hmm. and condemned sin in the flesh. That's right. He died. Amen to pay the penalty for the sin. And then now he condemns sin in the flesh. That's right. Wait a minute. We come from the law, mm -hmm. which we couldn't keep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it was on tables of stone. Look at, follow the progression here. We come from a law. Israel did. Couldn't keep it. Had to offer up sacrifices of bulls, rams and goats and whatever. Glory to God. Couldn't keep that law. We come now to the law, Jesus Christ coming, paying the penalty for the sins of everyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. He paid, paid the cost for everyone living on the planet, every sin that will ever be committed on the planet, he paid for it, all right? Now, then he writes that law in our hearts. That's right. That's the, that's the operation of faith in the new creature. That's the operation of God's faith in the new creature. Amen, the faith of God. Amen. It's an operation. Glory to God. It, God now writing the law on our hearts and in our mind. Mm -hmm. Because while the law was on a table of stone, it couldn't, it, it, it couldn't influence us. That's right. It didn't have the influence that it did. For, you know, there's one thing when you teach a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can teach me something. Glory to God. And I can be impressed by the teaching, and I can try to walk in that thing that you're teaching me. But it's a difference when you take the thing that you're teaching me and you make me that thing. Amen. That's a big difference. Amen. Amen. Because now, what, now, now, there's another scripture here. Amen. Well, let me let me just let me just stay with this one. Look at that fourth verse. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us. Amen. So everything that was in the law is supposed to be fulfilled That's right. in the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Now, when preachers stand before the congregations of God and say 
that there's no way we can fulfill the law. The law was a way up here, and, and that's why God, you know, had to do away with it. Jesus had to come and be that mediator that stood between us and God. He's our, he's our firewall. Mm -hmm. You know, he's standing between us and hell, glory to God, because there's no way we can ever keep the statutes mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible just said differently. That's right. The Bible said that we are charged to be doers of the word of God, and the scripture just told us in Romans, glory to God, amen, the fourth verse, that we now, glory to God, the righteousness that was in the law must be fulfilled in us. What does that mean, Bishop? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's interesting. I was just thinking about that as you would ask the question, and the righteousness of the law is those Ten Commandments, they include all of those Ten Commandments. All those Ten Commandments. It says, you know, whatever, you can go through all of them, but that, that's the righteousness of the law. Those Ten Commandments were not unlawful. Mm -hmm. They were not ungodly. We didn't get it excused from obeying them. But uh, Apostle, this, the scripture that I see as, uh, that made an impact on my own life is Titus 2.11. Okay, Titus 2.11. 2.11 through 15. Uh -huh. And I think we missed some part of this in the fifth, and in, in we get to 11, 12, and, and et cetera, but we don't get to the 15. Well, we missed something here. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation uh -huh. hath appeared unto all men. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Bishop. Grace brought salvation. Yes. Okay, the spirit of grace, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. brought us salvation. Mm -hmm. You're not saved without it. That's right. Scripture says in Romans that if you don't have the spirit, you're none of his. None of his. So without the spirit of grace, you, you don't even have salvation. No. So what that means without the Holy Ghost, guys, we're not saved. You're not saved without the Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, seek God for mm -hmm. it. He will give it to you if you really want it. Amen. Mm -hmm. it's, and what does this grace do? Okay. Because we talked about it and it does something. Okay. It, the, the, the law on tables of stones couldn't do it. Okay. But grace does it. And what it says here, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly righteous and godly in this present world. Mm -hmm. Looking for that blessed hope that and the glorious appearing of the, of the great God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here's what I want us to see here. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Okay. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So God wasn't interested in leaving any iniquity in us. Come on. He was not interested in just remaking an old man. God purpose, the spirit of grace, is to redeem us from all iniquity. In other words, he said, I wiped the slate completely clean. Mm -hmm. I made you a new creature, but in this making you a new creature, I have now empowered you so that you can continue now to walk in fulfilling all of the righteousness of the law and walk pleasing unto God every day. And Apostle, you said something that I, I think that uh, bears repeating here. I, I used to think about how are you going to walk perfect? You know, all of this stuff, how are you going to be perfect? Mm -hmm. And one of the definitions that have been so refined, that perfection is choosing to obey God every time. Amen. Just choosing to obey God. That's perfection. That's perfection. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, so we can't say that God have not given us the ability to choose to obey him every day. Mm -hmm. We can obey God every day. And so what we've got to look at this grace of God, it is not a, just a thing, he's a person. That's right. He's alive. And so that life is what we are, who mm -hmm. we are. And so that's the major distinction that I've made, been able to make between the philosophy mm -hmm. and the reality of what the scripture says. Amen. Because the reality says this is the life and that life is Christ. And if we have him, we have the power to live exactly as he lived. Now, Bishop, I want to go back to this Titus, uh, this Titus 2 scripture here. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, the Titus 2 and 12, it says, 
well, the 11 verse leads into it. It says, for the grace of God, mm -hmm. the grace of God, that's the subject matter. Yes. That's the grace, that, that grace is the subject matter here. The grace of God, which is the Holy Ghost. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, mm -hmm. teaching us. Mm -hmm. He's talking about, and, when, and, and right here, all men, he's not talking about the world. That's he's right. He's talking about us that have been right. born again. That's right. Amen. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and unworld and worldly lust. Yes. Okay. The grace of God teaches us that. Oh, now, God. now, now watch this now. Glory to God. If God, if God intended mm -hmm. for grace to be this covering mm -hmm. for sin, this, this, this thing that takes away our responsibility to live holy. Yes. That's, that's what, that's what this, that's um, see, when you say, I, when, when I heard my brother Creflo Dollar say that you cannot sin your way out of God, mm -hmm. I cringed. I cringed. My, my spirit just, I'm like, oh, my God, he did not say that to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. You cannot sin your way out of God. When I heard that, I, I got so nervous. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, because, and, and, and what God did, this, this is how that came about. I was in bed trying my best to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I, many times I'm studying so uh, or I'm writing study guides or, or counseling or whatever. And when I get into bed, sometimes I can't sleep. And I'm trying to go to sleep, glory to God. I, I even got up and took a sleeping pill mm -hmm. to, to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. and, and just when you would think the pill was about to work, of course, God starts to talk. Mm -hmm. And God said to me, I want you to get up and I want you to, I want you to listen mm -hmm. to this grace message. Mm -hmm. I said, and he told me who to listen to. He told me, he said, go and listen to uh, Brother Dollar's mm -hmm. message. And so I went to Brother Creflo's message. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, and, and I was listening to him and, and he, there were some things in it that just really caused me to cringe. Glory to God. And he was saying, you cannot. And he was so, em, he was so emphatic about it. There's no way for you to sin your way out of God. I need to repeat this. He kept saying, I need, to, I need you to understand this. You cannot sin your way out of God. Sin will not take you out of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, um, and, and all through the message, it was, it was, a, it was really taking the believer mm -hmm. to a place where he didn't have to worry about if I, if I sin, I just sin. You know, God mm -hmm. got that. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's where it would take you. And so immediately after I heard this, I, I, I had to stay up to, you know, because the message was quite long. I stayed up and, and in the wee hours of the morning, God said to me, he said, the purpose of that message is to remove conviction from the body of Christ. That's right. To take conviction out of the body. Bishop, what happens when a, per, a, a, a believer, a believer can walk, try to walk in God, listening to a message like that over and over and over again that tells him that he cannot sin enough to, be, to lose his salvation. If, if, the, if it's doing what God said, mm -hmm. removing conviction, mm -hmm. what state is that person going to end up in? That, that's a pathway to a reprobate. You know, it's just, oh it's a really dangerous thing. And where I'm sitting today, I realize more than ever in over 50 years of ministry, mm -hmm. how serious and how close we can be to being a reprobate. When we allow ourselves to go down that path to, to negate the, the, the holy living that God requires, uh, God said something to me one day. He says, I required all the vessels in the temple that were material things to be holy, and I forbade any person that wasn't godly to even put their hands on it. Mm -hmm. How much more do you think that I require a holy vessel for me to get in and to dwell in and to live through? So that message, when you lose your conviction, 
you become a person that is totally in captivity with the, of the enemy and the enemy is directing you into a path that is on its way to being a reprobate. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, 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 that right there, we got to put a pin in that right there. The path to becoming reprobate. That is the intent of this message. Glory to God. This, this grace revolution, That's it right. will take you all the way to being a reprobate if you really take it to heart. Glory to God. And we're going to talk more about that, amen, after we come back. Welcome to Bible Teachers International, the church home where your spiritual growth means something. To us, you're not a number to be counted, but a soul to be cultivated. Here at Bible Teachers, there's always a fresh perspective on the scriptures. A worship experience that takes you right into the presence of God. And dance and drama that paint a portrait of the word. We are a global, multicultural ministry with churches around the world and online. With leaders who are invested in seeing your ministry come to life. Find us in the sunny tropical islands of the Caribbean on Sudas Road in Trinidad. In Jamaica, Montego Bay, Halfway Tree, East Kingston, Trenchtown, and Bath St. Thomas. In the Bahamas, Freeport, Nassau. Worship with us up north in Mississauga, Canada. Visit us from state to state in the U.S. In Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Palm Beach, Maitland, Belle Glade, Sarasota, Indian Town, and Leesburg. In Atlanta, Georgia. In Shelby, Mississippi and in Spring, Texas. Join us online at msogglobalchurch.net or btionlinechurch.com To see full listings and contact information of all our locations, go to bibleteachers.com Glory to God. I tell you, God is just moving. Glory to God. Bishop, let's talk about Let's talk about this grace now. We, you know, we had to put a pin in there because before the break, you took us, you took us someplace that l many people don't want to go. Amen. And I'm sure that that those preachers of the grace uh, revolution mm -hmm. doctrine, I, I'm sure that that's not their intent. I don't. I I want to, you know, put this disclaimer out there. I don't believe that it is the intent of the minister themselves. I believe that they think that. What they're preaching is, you know, what is. Um, but when I listen to them, when I listen to my brother Joseph Prince and I listen to my brother uh, Creflo, they, those are the two leading generals mm -hmm. of this message. Mm -hmm. they, they are the ones that are mostly out front mm -hmm. with it. When I listen to them, I hear men that are ministering a word from their reading comprehension. They're, they're, they're reading the Bible and they're, they're, they're reasoning. They're reasoning its meaning within themselves. Mm -hmm. They are not receiving a revelation mm -hmm. from God of the scriptures because everything that they're teaching totally contradicts what God has given to us to read. Amen. So they can't be reading with revelation. Mm -hmm. They're reading with their own reasoning ability. That's, you know, that's what I get out of it. Now, I don't believe that these gentlemen are deliberately, willingly, knowingly trying to lead the body of Christ into being, becoming reprobate. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Lord said to me, the purpose of the message, mm -hmm. the message, not their purpose, mm -hmm. but the purpose of the message. See, because if you, the message doesn't have to come from God. The message can come from Satan. The, because when I listen to it, it is a doctrine of the devil. It belongs to Satan. They just don't know that. I just don't believe that they know that because these people believe that they love the Lord. They believe that they love the Lord. Um, and uh, I just don't believe that they would deliberately, knowingly minister something that they know is going to lead the body into becoming reprobate. Mm -hmm. However, glory to God, what they do need to consider, and I love my brothers, I love them dearly, and, and I respect them because I've heard some truths come from them. I've heard uh, some truths that they have preached in times past. It's this message, this, this, this message that, that is lately now trending is just wrong. It's just not the, the, it's not the word of God. 
and um, and it has to be addressed. It has to be it has to be addressed. It, glory to God, uh, and and uh, that's what we're here for. That's right. We're here because as apostle, Amen. As an apostle in the body of Christ, as a, as a prophet in the body of Christ, we are the gatekeepers of what goes into the body, Amen. And we have to address the poison that the enemy is pouring into the body. Uh, I believe that, that, that uh, I want to believe this. I want to believe this, that if these brothers could, could really sit down and look at the scriptures, if we could come together and reason in the scriptures, I believe that they would see the truth. I want to believe that they would see the truth uh, because one of the things that is missing in their whole uh, walk is they don't have apostolic order. They don't have that the revelation of the mystery of Christ was given to the apostleship and the apostles and the, and the latter day prophets were to confirm that message and pour it into the body of Christ. If you're not, if you don't, uh, if you're not privy to that, then you only have bits and pieces of truth. And now you got to try to, you got to try to glue those pieces together. You're taking bits and pieces of a puzzle that you're trying to put together without having the, the entire picture. Glory to God. So, so I just believe that we now have to make known the missing pieces of that puzzle. puzzle. We have to be the one to supply those missing pieces. And that's what we're here today to do. Now you set us on a, on a road there that removing conviction from the body of Christ mm -hmm. could lead a person into reprobate. Can you mm -hmm. elaborate more on that, Bishop? Yeah, because once you don't have a conviction, uh, that conviction is taken away, then there is no restraint uh, from the enemy. Of uh, There's no restraint uh, in you that resists the, the, the temptation of the enemy. Okay, so basically, what, you, what you're saying is there's a scripture. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that comes to mind. Evil communications Corrupts. corrupt good manners. That's right. Okay? That's is, right. That, is that what that, you're talking that's about? That's exactly right. Because once we, and, and, and you know, Apostle, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, uh, at this time, to really reconcile the notion that, again, as I said, I think in one of the previous, the fundamental message mm -hmm. that 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 God would have to convey to you if you're going to preach this gospel God would have to, to you got more sense than to pick me up and send me to teach a lesson without making sure that I know the lesson okay you 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 don't do that you don't send a minister out to uh, with an objective to accomplish your heart and not know that that minister at least knows the message. God is far wiser than us. Mm -hmm. He is not calling people and picking them up and sending them forward. That's, that's, that's where I'm at with so, that. So it's, it's not that, um, well, because this is what God said. He said nine out of every ten that is preaching the gospel he didn't send them. Okay. So we're, we're not, and, and this is where I question. Mm -hmm. this, this is what I question. I question when a minister does not have the sentiments mm -hmm. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. When you see the, see the sentiments of righteousness mm -hmm. speaks differently. Jeez. That's right. Than, uh, than someone that would, would fight, for the right of an individual to sin, mm -hmm. I, I, that right. I, that just doesn't That's reconcile. Right. As a saint, I heard I heard Apostle Mike say this. Glory to God. Why would a a sanctified, born again believer mm -hmm. fight for his right to sin? That's right. That just does not seem to to. Um, uh, it doesn't seem to gel with God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like someone that is of God. Mm -hmm. When you are of God, sin, sin was not supposed to be an issue in salvation. That's right. It was not even supposed to be an issue. Mm -hmm. And for it to even be an issue mm -hmm. is troubling. That's right. It's troubling for God. Mm -hmm. Amen. To look at his people and now we're debating about whether we can sin or That's not. Right. 
for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, Romans 2, 14, right. glory to God, do by nature the things contained in the law. Right. Glory to God. So, so wait a minute now. What does that mean? That means it goes back to what you said, amen, in Ezekiel, amen, that God has written mm -hmm. this law in our hearts yeah. so, that, so that now, glory to God, Peter picks it up. Mm -hmm. Peter says we have become partakers of mm -hmm. the divine nature. That's right. So that's what Paul is talking about here. He's saying when the Gentiles do by nature those things that are contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Amen. So, so that's what I was trying to re relay in our previous broadcast is that, glory to God, there's a difference in you teaching me the law. Mm -hmm and making me the law. That's right. That's what this scripture That's is right. saying, that God actually made Amen. us the law. Amen. Amen. By changing us from within. So now how is it that I've been changed? Listen to me when I say sentiment here. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I question the sentiment of my, my colleagues here. Glory to God. Because if I've been changed from the inside, mm -hmm. if I've been changed from the inside, I don't have I don't, I, I am persuaded against sin. Mm -hmm. That's right. That change from the inside made me a law unto God. Mm -hmm. I am a law unto myself. Mm -hmm. That's what the, the scriptures say. The commandments were written in my heart, mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God now mm -hmm. has the spirit of grace. Yes. Amen. Has made me a law mm -hmm. unto myself. In other words, I am now the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus was the word made flesh, I have become the word made flesh. Glory to God. God is now, amen, living through me. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. My sentiments are toward him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So how is it that these theologians, preachers, glory to God, can now bring us a doctrine that fights, mm -hmm. that literally fights for my right to sin against God. Mm -hmm. That's right. To say that I cannot sin my way out of God. Mm -hmm. Who promotes sin? That's right. They said it's not a promotion, mm -hmm. but it is indeed a promotion because now it takes away my conviction. That's right. You, you, I don't have to be convicted. I keep hearing that over and over mm -hmm. again. You know what? The Holy Spirit convicts me when I sin. Mm -hmm. Does it convict you? Yes. Why would it convict me if it's, if it's not wrong? That's right. You know, the Holy Spirit convicts us when we sin. But if I continuously hear a message over and over and over and over and over again, you know what's happening? That evil communication is corrupting me. That's right. It's beginning to corrupt me. It's corrupting the good in me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm losing, just like God said to me, that message is designed to take away conviction. It's designed to take away the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, every, everything that God gave us, every senses, all of our spiritual senses, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, amen. All of our spiritual senses are given to us in the fear of the Lord. Jesus had all of those spiritual senses, those six mm -hmm. spiritual senses, inside of the fear of the Lord. Look at, look at Isaiah 11 chapter. He had all of those spiritual senses inside of the fear of the Lord. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Now you take away the fear of God. That's right. You do anything. That's right. You don't fear, you, don't, you know, the scripture tell us, glory to God, that God is a terror mm -hmm. to the wicked. Amen. And when I can do wickedness, that makes me wicked. That's right. Glory to God. And so, but if you take away my fear, Mm -hmm. My fear of not pleasing God, mm -hmm. my fear, you took away the fear when you continuously tell me over and over and over again, you're taking away the conviction. That's what God said that message is designed to do, and that's what it does. Yes, man. Amen. And you know, this is uh, just a quick note to what you're ministering. The scripture says something so direct. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, we're not having to dig through something and and right. just like like going on a witch hunt to try to find something. Right. The scripture is straightforward. Paul, this is not new. This was going on in Paul's day and time. There were people that were saying we could live a life vacillating in and out of sin and we could still be okay 
because we've been saved by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And they was accusing Paul of a weak, watered down gospel because he was mainly the one that was ministering the message I've been, from Ephesians, been saved by grace, not of works. But Paul answered this in a blunt way. Mm -hmm. the, the saints at Rome confronted him. Yes. The whole story is that there was a real situation going on in the church at Rome. Right. They confronted him and Paul said, what shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin mm -hmm. that grace may abound? That's Romans 6 and 1. Romans 6 and 1. Mm -hmm. So now if, if it, then he answered the question, he didn't try to give no long explanation before he answered. Mm -hmm. This answer was so readily in him. He said, God forbid. God forbid. In other words, God is against that. Mm -hmm. In other words, God is against, let's see, what is he against now? God is, is against us continuing in sin. That's right. So we don't have to continue to sin. That's right. Glory to God. So, and, and, and continuing in sin means, glory to God, I sin today. I may not do it for three months, mm -hmm. but I do the same thing again. That's right. Okay, I didn't do it for another month. I do it again. That's mm -hmm. continuing in sin. That's right. That's and, and that's what sin. he was coming against. And then he spent the whole chapter showing them why that's a dangerous position to be in. And so he's, and he says, now we've got to allow this life of Christ to be the life that is lived through us. Mm -hmm. And sin and Christ doesn't have a mixture. My God. It doesn't My have God. a mixture. My God. Amen. You know, there's so many scriptures that we can bring to you. Amen. About this. And we're going to. Because we're going to stay on this topic for a while until we've exhausted it. Amen. The grace revolution versus the grace revelation. You are going to have to decide now the, the, what these people are saying about grace. Amen. Their, their philosophy of grace. I call it a philosophy because that's what it is. It's, there's no scriptural basis for it. Amen. We are going to let the Bible. We have, we have cited scripture. And we're going to continue to cite scripture because this is Bible teachers. Amen. We allow the scriptures to do the teaching. Praise the Lord. And so I want you to continue to follow us. Continue to follow us. We got to go, Bishop. Glory to God. Our time is up. Praise Mary you. Banks and Bishop Jones. We'll see you next time. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise.